Yo, yo, what up? It's Raphael, NBA Big Board. I have a special guest. I have Mike Foster. We are live. We're in Memphis, Tennessee, where Mike is working out with Penny Hardaway, Sheet Wallace, Bonzi Wells. Thank you for coming on. No, thanks for having me, boss. All right, man, let's, let's get right into it. You had one of the best high school careers out of everybody that's coming up in this draft class. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the draft board, you see guys that you've outplayed on every level getting more love than you. I mean, personally, I haven't looked at no draft. The draft board, not yet. I, I don't really try to pay attention to that right now. So you just focus on? Just focus. I okay. mean, I hear it wants to be on ESPN, you know, this mm -hmm. the top 10 I got, they see, but it's really that I really look, look at it. All right, so how's this draft process been for you? I mean, so far it's been good. I've been out in Vegas uh, for like what, a month and a half. Okay. Lost uh, about 12 pounds. They said they want to see me slim up, so. What, what were you doing to lose? Like, was it change your diet or was it just a different workout? Or actually, let me, let me ask you this question. Did you bulk up to play in the G League and now you're back at a more comfortable weight? Uh, I would say I bulked up for the G League. Uh, I mean, that was just my weight. A goal for when I was in Milwaukee was to see if I can reach, you know, 250. And, you know, that I hit that goal and I've been there for a little minute. But once I got to the G League and then, you know, they said I got a little fat. Uh, they wanted to see me slim down, so I had, you know, waited to, you know, off season, put that work in. And it's been a diet. I mean, I got a uh, crew out there uh, at Impact. You know, mm -hmm. they give me meals. I eat, you know, three meals a day, you know, plus protein. You know, I got vitamins and things like that. So, okay. Good little so, diet. what's a typical day like for you? So, I, a lot of people always want to know in the NBA draft, like, what are guys doing to prepare? Because to me, this is like the biggest job interview of your life, mm -hmm. right? It's millions of dollars on the table. What's a typical day like for you? Uh, wake up around like 8, get to the gym around like, of course, I eat. Uh, you know, I got a plan. I mean, I got a uh, little note that I always have before the night. I got to wake up, eat eggs, a little, just protein and, you know, some type of, you know, some type of little healthy, what's the name, like oatmeal eggs, mm -hmm. you know, pancakes, eggs. Uh, <laughs> get to the gym around like nine, you know, scratch. I get on the court around like, I mean, I work out in the weight room to like 9.30 to like 10.15. Mm -hmm. Then I'm on the court to like 10.15 to like 12 something. Then we leave out. I got a meal I eat, you know, the homie for the next workout. Uh, next workout I'll be like 2.30. Come back then, come back, get some more shots up. Uh, leave at the gym around like 5, 5.30. And then that's it. Full day. Full day. So, like, what is your focus? Like, you, you're so skilled. There's a lot of things that you, you do well, right? What is your focus, like, coming into this pre-draft process? For example, like, there are guys, it's a clear weakness, can't dribble, mm -hmm. can't shoot, need to work on this. But you do so many things well. Is there, like, a main focus for you? Uh, I mean, not really. Uh, I mean, me personally and the go I well, Joe, Joe uh, Vigil for me, you know, also shoot the three. You know, the team's going to be a four or five, mm -hmm. scratch the floor. So I'll say, like, shooting. Uh, but really, I'm really working on everything, make sure my my handle's tighter. Of course, my body looking different and shot looking good. I mean, and, of course, defense, you know, we got, like, drills. We do it our, we do a lot of the – not a lot, but we do a couple of defensive drills, you know, make sure you know, we get every, everything down. So I like to ask questions that most people want to ask. All right, I'm the – General manager of NBA team. No, I'm the owner of NBA team. Mm -hmm. Why you? Why, why me? Why Why should I select you? Because I mean, I'm. I can adapt to any little situation. You need me to go get ten rebounds. You know, guard the best player every night. I mean, I'm down for that. I do the best best ability that I can. Uh, and I'm. I ain't no crazy guy. You know, it's a lot of people. Who, like Rasheed. Um, he got a he got a good personality, but you know it's a couple guys that went in there that's real crazy. I mean, I'm one of a laid back guy, one of them. Yeah, Rashid is honestly growing up. Rashid was like my favorite favorite yeah. player. I used to wear the high top Air Force Ones. I didn't comb my nah. hair. I was, <laughs> and I mean, obviously I'm not a big guy, but I I used to just want to be a post player mm -hmm. because of Rashid. So having this opportunity to watch him work out live was was big for me. How has it been for you to work out with someone like Rashid, who's constantly yapping and talking, and he, he's bringing that energy? How how has that been for you? I mean, it's been good. Even though I've, I've been uh, I've been coached by him in camps. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's been good. Like you just said, he bring a lot of energy, so he forced me to match his. He always bumping me, you know, 
push me this and that, trying to, you know, make me pick my energy up. So it's just nothing about just a little a, a, a match of energy. Yeah, he spoke real highly of you. I, I interviewed him yesterday. He had great things to say about you. And I, I, I see Rashid as a guy. It's not like I know him, but I see Rashid as a guy that's no nonsense. And if he if he rocks with you, he definitely rocks with yeah. you. And so I, I've noticed that that with you. What are some of the things that you picked up from from Sheed? I mean, he always tell me, you know, you got to be the, a big personality walking into the gym. Always be the loud guy. I mean, we're going to be the taller guys on the court, you know, maintain. going to be the biggest. You know, we got to be the backbone of the team. So he just say, just just be a present. All right, so let's get back to the question about your your draft process. Is it possible? I mean, it's kind of weird to say you went from, like, the top player to, like, underrated. Man. That's crazy. <laughs> speak speak on that. Like it's 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 not something that happens often to where, you know, somebody has all of your accolades and all of your awards and you've outplayed guys and then now you're like underrated. It's it's the politician, you know. I control my own narrative, me and my circle, and I don't think people really like that at the stage where we are now. Like, you know, Brian had that little thing where he announced the Miami thing and the lead and like that, I just feel like they always they wanted me to do what they wanted me to do. But go to college my, route. Yeah, me and my team, my little circle that I had, like we know what our what's name is, and it been it been well right now. Actually, great. Like, I don't, and they don't like that, you know. So you know they started coming up with bad narrative, mm-hmm. this and that. But if you know me, you know me. You if you read an article that's you know trying to bash me, you'll be like, that's not Mike. Mm-hmm. So I mean, hey. And I honestly have never never heard anything negative about you. I've always heard that that you work. And so I think I don't like people say I'm lazy though. Like it's a lot of stuff out there that say, you know, Mike Foster lazy, he this and that, but man, ten times out of ten I'm the hardest working guy in the gym. Yeah, and I've 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 never heard anything negative. Um and this is probably like a loaded question. How much of it do you think is because you you come from where you come from? You come from Milwaukee. And is there like a stereotype of inner city kids that there's a narrative that people create behind someone that grew up in uh, that's from like the inner city it's a lot bro i mean like i said it is a narrative on me because who i am and where i came from uh and i ain't followed the path you know people wanted me to follow so it's like why not like just kick him under the rug i mean you go to camps i haven't lost the camp but you know it gets the top guys always Every time you match up, I win the game, better stats. I mean, it's really, I mean, it just, they, I don't, I really can't explain it because it's really just like, you know, I don't know. I really can't put it in a uh, yeah. situation. It's just crazy, though. I feel like the G League is a, a catch-22. I feel like on one hand, it helps you because you're prepared for professional basketball. You learn the terminology. You're playing against grown men. But then I feel like in your case, the lack of exposure has has definitely worked against you because mm-hmm. you're not on TV. Like I remember last year when like Jalen Green, yeah. they yeah, they played a game. It's like the first game was on TV. I remember like I think I was in California, it was on like ten o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. And then I felt like this year I just didn't see a bunch of G League games and, and I I mean I saw some just because this is what I do, so I, I have to watch. But I feel like the lack of exposure is kinda like it's almost like you're in the States but you might as well be in yeah. Europe somewhere because right. of the lack of, exposure, lack of exposure. So I feel like that has kind of hurt you a little bit. So going into like your workouts, your team workouts or individual workouts, what is your main motivation? Is it to prove people like, hey, y'all, y'all forgot about me? Uh, I want, yeah, it's probably that, yeah, <laughs> it's for be. sure. I mean, showing that, like, trying to leave a stamp, you know, mm-hmm. let people know like uh, why he wasn't, you know, why he wasn't in a spotlight like he's supposed to be. Like, I feel like I'm going to shock a lot of people just because they so-called don't know who I am. But mm-hmm. to me, I feel like everybody know who I am and what I can do. But, you know, I ain't on TV every night. So, I mean, it's to me, I really don't care because I know what I'm going to do in the workouts. Mm-hmm. And, and people the people in my class understand and they know. Like, they, they, know they told me, some people told me on my, on my mouth they know I should be number one or two. So, I'm like, I'm not really... They know how you get yeah, down. Yeah, they know how you get down in camps. I've been going to everybody, being that versatile guy, all type of stuff. So, so tell me how the G League helped you. Like, tell me about that overall experience. I mean, I like the experience. It teach you how to be a pro. 
preparation, uh, even off the court stuff. Uh, you know, we done a lot of a lot of off the court like. People don't know we still were doing like little classes. We was learning mm -hmm. about uh, real estate, all it's like all type of stuff like that. And then like on the court, just like competition level. Like I said, I I I try to find the best competition. That's why I chose the G lead over mm -hmm. though. What's the name? I ain't really care about being on TV every night. I wanted to play against the, you know, the people they say I can't play against. You know, the mm -hmm. stronger, faster guys. They want to see how I'm doing against that. I'm not a shot blocker, but I average like three blocks. You know. Being the defender, I, to me, I was probably the best defender on the team. But you know, the coverage we had didn't allow me to show it. But in practice, mm -hmm. I'm sure. switching out on guards. You know, it's film and stuff like that. But you know, it was a good little snap. I mean, I'm not. You know, I, I'm glad I made that decision. I won't. Re I won't. You know, I Change won't go to yeah. What What was your like aha moment in the G League? Because I imagine you know you're looking at these guys that are they're they're older than you, five, seven years older than you. What was the game that you felt like, yeah, like uh, I belong. Was it the game against Ibaka? That, it, that's the game that stands to out to yeah, me. Yeah, it had to be that game because you know, they were throwing like two to three people at me, and I was still like getting off bumping them. You know, they had Harry Giles, a, a, a tough guy. You know, and I show I standing up to him. You know, did my thing, but that's uh, just me though. Yep. So let's get back to like your development. So obviously, you knew you were going to be a big. When did you start working on? Your, your wing and your ball handling and your guard skills. Or I mean, you I've, I've been had that, to be honest. Like, even at the camps, it's, it's, it's a fan of me, you know, taking people off the dribble, shooting a three a lot. I don't, I really don't give people say I can't shoot. Mm -hmm. But if you go to the camps, that's really mainly what I'm doing, fading away, you know, getting to the lane, shooting it, actually a lot of catch and shoot. I mean, it just, like I said, the narrative is it's crazy, so. Like, when I, when I watch your film, I see a guy that does so many things well. And I think one of the things that is kind of hurt you in a sense is that they can't put you in a box, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, you, you look at the guys, you look at your bigs, vertical lob threat, rim protector, yeah. stretch four or three and D wing, mm -hmm. score, shooter, ball handler. So you do so many things well, right? Do you think, and it's, that's just my opinion, do you yeah. think that is kind of playing against you in a sense because they can't box you into a... Yes, and the crazy thing about that, I'm glad you brought it up, because during the G League, a couple guys tell me I have too much in my bag, and I'm like, I don't feel like how I have too much in my bag. But, you know, they say you got to minimize your game a lot, so that's mm -hmm. why I took out of, like, he probably saying I got to not take two dribbles, take one and do this and that, but it's like, I don't feel like you can have too much in your bag. Like, LeBron got a lot of stuff in his bag down, but like, oh, he do that too much, he do this and that, so why do it when it's me? But, you know, I'm not on, of course, I'm not on this level right now. But, you know, it's like. Now, it makes sense, though, because if, even if you look at, like, guys in college basketball, it's almost better to be a shooter than a scorer mm -hmm. in today's NBA. Because it's like there's these guys that they're paying $40 million, and they want everybody to be a complimentary player. Mm -hmm. So I've seen it, and I'm pretty sure you've seen it just in pickup. There may be a guy in the NBA that has a role as a shooter, and there may be a guy that plays overseas, and he mm -hmm. can't check. <laughs> the guy so it's almost like everybody's being put into these boxes and so they can't put you mm -hmm. in a box because you do so so many things well Let, let's talk about the shooting I, I've seen like one of the knocks on you is that you shoot a lot of 15 foot jumpers mm -hmm. mid-range jumpers how do you feel about that the game is the game that's how I feel about it you can't just say I don't know it just I don't really don't know. The analytics behind her saying it's a, it's 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 not a as as efficient of a shot as I don't see. And Chris Paul getting off right now. Uh, KD doing it. Demar Derozan getting fifties every every game doing it. Kobe did it. You know they trying to push it out, but you know it's hard to push a shot out of a game. It ain't no running hook no more. I see about all I was doing is the running hook. Even if it's if it's going in, it's it's, it's going, right. If it's going in, it's going in. It's going point in. on the board, ain't it? Draft day. Your name is called. Mm -hmm. What is that going to mean to you? Uh, my my journey have just now started. You know, this just preparation. The G League was preparation, test. You know, now the real exam finna come up. Now I gotta really, really lock in and really focus. I mean, plus it's like me and my team did it. Like we understand the goal. I mean, it's probably gonna be one of the best nights of my life. Gonna be the best night of my life. Getting 
getting drafted. And I know my guys right here are going to be excited for me. Of course, they're going to be on the building and at the floor if I, you know, get invited to the green room, this and that. But, you know, it's it, going to be a proud moment for sure. Has it hit you? Like for me, so I've always, had, of course, when I was a kid, I had this dream of making it to the NBA. And then I realized, like, it's not going to happen. <laughs> so I always wanted to be a scout. So, you know, for years I had, like, my website, tweeting, nobody's paying attention. Mm -hmm. And now I'm, like, getting to the point where yeah. I'm, like, I'm close. Like, I'm this close to, like, making it happen. Do you feel the same way? Like, like at least for you, you know there's a date, right? Yeah. I don't know the date where it's going to, like, It's crazy you said that because actually last night I was talking to my guy right here. Mm -hmm. And then I had got geek like, bro, we, I'm really going to get drafted really in a couple finished. months. Yeah. And I just got him, like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, we finna get drafted. Like, I'm finna get drafted. Like, come on now. Yeah, I mean, it's less than 1% of everybody that Man, has played basketball. That's crazy. So, but, I mean, I feel like the way you're working, you probably haven't really had time to process it because mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're so in the moment. So mm -hmm. this is the last question. You get that first that first check, the first NBA check. What's what's the first thing you're going to buy? Uh, I don't feel like I'm going to buy nothing. I mean. Smart with it. Yeah, probably so, invest before I buy. Uh, so you're much smarter than me. Yeah. At, at 19, if I would have got that check, at the time, I definitely would have bought a, I'm 42, I would have had an Escalade on. Yeah. <laughs> I already got my little, got my little dream car got already. Got the dream car? Yeah, okay. So I really ain't going to need none. Definitely ain't buying no house. Probably invested. Smart man. I mean, 19, right? Mm-hmm. Not too many 19-year-olds are talking about investing. <laughs> no, Thank you, man. I yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you.